That's called the right of first refusal. I get to be the first one to refuse the offer before you can take it to market. Now, you it's hard to give a first right to a multi-tenant building. I guess you could, but you would give preferential to one of them because you can't give all of them the first right. All right, you could only give one. Are we good? All right, I wanna talk about now some different types of leases. And I have prepared the file, I hope. So there are several different types of leases I wanna talk about. The first one I wanna talk about is this thing called a gross lease. A gross lease is where the tenant pays the landlord money, right here, and then the landlord goes out and pays all of the bills. So in essence, the landlord is receiving a gross amount. Remember yesterday we talked about gross minus expenses equals net. So in this particular case, the landlord is receiving the gross amount of rent, and then the landlord would go out and pay the real estate taxes, may pay the HOA, may pay insurance, all of that. This is typically a residential lease. You talk to someone who is renting a house and they will tell you, hey, we pay 900 bucks a month and the landlord takes care of all the stuff, all right? That is a gross lease. There is a second version of this, or a second lease, called a net lease. Net leases are typically in the commercial world. And here's the big difference. The tenant will pay the landlord rent. Now listen to what I'm telling you. And then the tenant goes out and pays the landlord's bills. The tenant would pay the real estate taxes on the property. The tenant would pay the insurance and the tenant would pay the maintenance of the building. The golden goose of the net lease is this thing we call triple net, triple net. And the, or sometimes you'll hear it called net, net, net. What that is telling you is there are three things that the tenant is paying for. Those are the common ones I just mentioned. Maintenance on the property is paid for by the tenant. Real estate taxes is paid for by the tenant. And the insurance on the building is paid for by the tenant. That is the net, 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 or triple net lease that tenants would pay and like I said, strictly or typically, those are in the commercial world. Now, my question to you, why would a tenant do this? And here's the best reason that I have ever come up with, and I've thought this through many, many times. This was originally created probably dozens and dozens of years ago. And let me ask you, in a gross lease where the landlord pays all the expenses, what would happen to a landlord's net money if one of their expenses went up? If the expense goes up, net would go down, right? Everybody get what I'm saying? If I earned $100 and I paid 50 of it out, I would net 50. But now I earn 100 and I got to pay 60 out. I'm only netting $40. My expenses went up. Therefore, my net goes down. All right. Now, look at this. In the gross lease, if my expense, I'm sorry, in the net lease, the commercial one, if the expense of real estate taxes went up, what happens to the landlord's money? 
Exactly. Nothing. Because the expense is being paid for by the tenant. Therefore, the rent to me is still $900 a month. The expenses going up have no bearing on the lease money the landlord is receiving on a net lease. Do you follow me on that? Because here's the reason why. Now, landlord in the commercial world can literally go out and borrow money because he knows his monthly income is not going to change. So he can borrow money to buy that building because if he's making an 8% return on his tenant and he wants to borrow money at six, he's covered for that big commercial lease. Because his expenses will not affect his rent that he's collecting. And what you see are these big landlords like Simon of Simon Malls, all of those properties or all of those businesses or all of those tenants in the Simon Mall are paying a triple net lease. So Simon, who is earning an 8% return on the cost of that mall, can literally now sell stock to you guys, which virtually is getting a loan, and guarantee that you're going to get a certain return on that stock because I know that my income as Simon is not going to change because the expenses are now being paid for by the tenant. So literally this lease was kind of created with the commercial lending uh, in mind. All right. So that's the net lease and the gross lease. The next thing is this one called a percentage lease. A percentage lease is where the landlord charges the tenant a percentage of the income that is generated by that tenant. Once again, this is a commercial lease and is very common in retail or restaurant so that the tenant, if they have a really good year, their lease may go up. If they're having a poor year, their lease could potentially be lower. And I told you that I brokered the Marsh um, sale over there. So let me ask you a question. They were on a percentage lease. I read the lease. And we talked about my favorite quote by Potter Stewart is, I cannot define pornography, but I know it when I see it. In Marsh, Marsh's percentage lease, they were supposed to pay $11,833 a month plus 4% of any amount of money over a million dollars in sales of groceries. So their lease literally stated they have what's called a base plus 4% of anything over a million dollars in groceries. And my favorite quote was, I cannot define pornography, but I know when I see it. So let me ask you, what are groceries? You think you know what they are? Can you define them? Because it took March nine pages to define what groceries were. Things like lottery, didn't count. Floral didn't count. Magazines 
didn't count. Candy didn't count. Deli didn't count. If you walked into that marsh and bought a bologna sandwich out of the deli case, that would not count as a grocery sale. But if you walked into the aisle and bought a loaf of bread and a pack of bologna and walked out the parking lot and ate it, that would be a grocery sale. So they pay 4% of anything over a million dollars in groceries. That is a typical percentage lease. As their sales go up, the landlords goes up because they are collecting a percentage of the tenant's sales. Now, there's one key here on the exam and in the real world. Watch for this word right there. Because it could say plus, or it could say or a percentage. So it, in Marsh's case, it said $11,833 plus 4%. It could say $11,833 or 4% of the sales, whichever is the greater of the two. So watch that on the exam. Does it say plus or or? Was there a question, Cameron? No? Okay. So just watch that. Now, in that million dollars that I just mentioned, that is what they call the floor. So if they sell less than a million, there is no overage being paid. All right, so think of the floor as like the minimum amount. That's literally what a floor is. It's the bottom or the base. If the tenant doesn't reach that floor, then there's no overage paid. If they do reach that floor, then they only pay on the overage. So if they sold 1.2 and their floor was a million, they would only pay 4% of that $200,000, right? If their sales was 1,200 and their floor is a million, they would only pay on the overage. So 4% of 200 grand would be another $8,000. That is an annual payment. You divide that by 12, and that would be like another 666. That would be added to that because this is a plus. Got it? So watch out on the test. Does it say a base plus a percentage? Or does it say a base or a percentage? Typically when it says or, you get that other verbiage added in. Base or a percentage, whichever is the greater of the two. So if it's an or in there, they would not pay both of them. They would just pay one or the other. That way, it never goes below a base. Cool? <laughs> Top of the next page, there's a term called a variable lease. A variable lease just means it's scheduled to change inside of the lease. May start at one price, may start, end at another. And there are two types of variable leases. One is called a graduated, where it just goes up. We started at the school on a variable lease. We did the first six months at a discounted rate. And then in the seventh month, it jumped up. And that was the landlord allowing us to get started as a new business, all right? There is what they call an index lease. I have never seen a lease based on an index, ex 